they need to increase their efficiency, increase the amount of deals or jobs they can handle at any given time. Hey, do I own my website? Will I own my domain? Will I own my ad account? Am I going to have access to reporting? A CRM that meets your needs now, but meets your needs five years from now. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we've been here, uh, what, 40 minutes late on the start time? Shout yeah, out to... that. Yeah, you know, Riverside FM, my camera, it's a cable, it's all these different things, but all that to say, here we are, episode 44 with Casey. What's up, Casey? Hey, Mike, how's it going? It's going well. Hey, question, did you know that pupils, they're the, the last part <clears throat> to stop working when you die, as far as your body's concerned? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. They die What is concerning is that you know that. <laughs> They dilate. Yep. Pupils dilate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, they don't all land, folks, but you keep on moving. <laughs> Shout out to Roofer for, for bringing this uh, podcast to life in conjunction with Ascend Digital Agency. If you need clean and pristine proposals, instant roof measurements, hit up the team at Roofer. They're great. Tell them we sent you. There's a link in the comments. Click it. So, Casey. You've, uh, you've done some things in CRM once or twice, yeah? I have done some things in CRMs just a couple times, yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds fucking awful. It's hit and miss. <laughs> you, you have good days, you have bad days. You know, sure. just like we had technology issues today. <laughs> well, hopefully the issues persist so that um, you, know, you can keep getting new projects. And uh, solving, solving the world's issues, you know, one CRM workflow at a time. Exactly. <sighs> I've got a lot of questions. Why do I have answers. Need, why do people need a CRM? Let's say roofers or contractors. Yeah. People need a CRM because they need to increase their efficiency, increase mm -hmm. the amount of deals or jobs that they can handle at any given time. People without a clear idea of their systems, their the pipeline are struggling. Uh, their systems are chaotic. And we've, we've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people come up to us and say, like, my business is chaos. I feel like I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off and I have no idea what's going on. I don't know how to direct the ship. And I'm just struggling to keep my head above water. A properly set up CRM technology system does that for you. You don't have to think about it. It provides you a list of jobs that need to be dealt with today, a list of tasks that need to be dealt with today. It can essentially create your task list for you throughout that day. And so it's so important to get your head on right and to get your business running smoothly. And that's why CRM is so important. Hmm. If, you had to, if you had to say three things as far as trying to figure out what CRM is the right fit for you, what are the three things to consider? One is budget. Uh, that's going to be probably the biggest one that most people come to us with. What's it going to cost? Mm -hmm. The second is the fact that um, you need to have internal resources. How much do you want to know? Uh, how, much, how much do you want to have a hand in creating it? How much do you need to know as a leader or as a uh, management you know, higher up on the leadership team? How much do you actually need to understand of the system in order for it to function properly? And I would say the last thing is um, how complicated is your business? Do you have a good idea of what your business actually does? Have you mapped it out? So those are three components that you ultimately need to be able to answer, at least at a high level, in order to be able to choose a CRM. And in order for it to be not only a CRM that meets your needs now, but meets your needs five years from now. And that's what a lot of people forget. Yeah, and I've been through this. You know, we, we were working in a system that didn't meet our needs down the road from when we started. And, you know, it's, I tell everybody, like, get started sooner than later. You know, I've, I've talked to guys that they're doing a half million in revenue and they're kind of flying by the seat of their pants. And, like, it's, it's great until it's fucking not. Um, and what it's going to take to get four people on board and bought in and to adopt a new CRM and system and processes associated with that is a lot more challenging than doing it now when it's just you. So become the master of it, understand it, and then you know it'll be a, the learning curve will be less steep for those people because it won't be the blind leading the blind when it comes yep. to them to come on board. Exactly. Hmm. 
Can a CRM increase your closing percentage on sales? If, if used right, if it's used as a tool, absolutely it can. So it can actually help you follow up, help you create tasks related to ensuring your team is doing the things they need to do. So it creates reminders. It can automate follow-up processes. So it can actually increase this because these jobs, these deals are not falling through the cracks. And that's the biggest thing. So that's, that's what I tell people is it's, it's not so much going to do it for you, but it helps you do your job better. And if you're doing your job better, you're going to be able to close more leads. You're going to be able to sell more projects and you're going to drive revenue and profits because of that. Hmm. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see people running into when they retain your services to work on their CRM? Yeah, the, the biggest challenge is the fact that they don't know what they want their business to do. They don't have a clear vision of what they want their, they might know what they want to do now, but they don't have a clear roadmap or a clear vision of what they want their business to do one, three, five years from now. And without that vision, it's really, really difficult for us to help plan for their future. So just saying this is what we do right now, that's great. But if you don't know, you know, if your goals as a business owner are to scale and grow to 5 million, 10 million, well, that is actually really important as to how we can go about setting things up. If you don't know how you want your production to be scheduled, if you don't know how you want your materials to be ordered, if you're not sure what tools you want to use, obviously there's a ton of tools out there for, you know, ordering materials or uh, getting the measurement information for takeoffs, things like that. It's really imperative that you know that ahead of time to build those integrations, to build that streamlined process. So if you don't have that kind of thought out ahead of time, if you're like, oh, we're going to use this tool, this tool, you have five tools you're utilizing, it's going to be very difficult for someone to plan how to use these tools more effectively in the overall architecture of the system. That makes a lot of sense. And it's tough sometimes to say, you know, in five years, I want to be doing this. Um, yeah. because things change. But to have a tentative understanding of where you want to go and putting some thought and energy behind that is important. You know, and, and as you tell me that, I kind of think of like the first thing that came to mind, this is not financial advice, so don't take it as such. <laughs> but like, I think of like an investment strategy, right? Like day trading and the way that you're going to go execute and the methodology that you're going to deploy when you're day trading is going to be substantially different than your 401k and your long-term investments, right? Um, and depending on how old you are is also going to dictate how you invest your money, right? If I'm super young, which I'm not, so whatever. Um, but if I'm super young, I'm likely going to be more aggressive or whomever is handling, you know, my investments are going to be more aggressive because I have more time to rebound if there is a huge dip versus if I'm 61, we're probably going to be more conservative because there's a lot more to lose. But that's all understanding context and kind of where you want to be in the long term, short term and, yeah. and, and ha having those things in sight when you're when you're investing your money. And same thing with Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'd say that's, that's the same thing with honestly any business. Like we all as business owners, as, as my own business owner, I struggle to picture what my business will look like one year, three year, five year, 10 year. Like I absolutely get it. And so that's where we kind of come in and be like, well, what do you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? And so we can kind of guide people along the way uh, if they're not sure and showcase like these are the different options available to you. And this is how you could use these different tools more effectively. So even just having a conversation with someone to kind of pull that out, whether it's your internal team or you're looking and talking with a consultant like myself or yourself, you know, like what do you want your digital marketing strategy to be? That's a big question for a lot of businesses. And so if you can actually come back and have a conversation with your internal team or talk with someone about it, because a lot of business owners feel they need to do it themselves. Even a business coach, like I know we like all of these things out there that can help you pull out the information you need to be more successful utilize it utilize those resources as much as possible utilize your team to be more effective and then you can pull that information out so that when you go to someone or when you start planning strategically you actually are able to use the information that you've gathered throughout this 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 process and that's really really important mm, yeah that's a really good point thank you for sharing that Are there any CRMs, have you ever run into a circumstance where somebody's trying to, to divest from one CRM, go into another one, and there's been an issue securing their, their data and transferring it over? Because I know that's, been, that's yep. been the trepidation with clients in the past. I don't do CRMs, but they're like, we want to do this, but you know, this company's telling us that you know, it's, it's, you know, essentially they own the data, kind of holding it hostage. 
Yeah, and I, um, I hate those companies. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. You as a business, it's your data. You should own it. If you're not owning your data, and I'll actually take this back to one of those first questions you asked, you should look up and see who actually owns the data and make sure that it fits with your potential long-term strategy. If you want access to this data, how easy is it to get out? How easy can you pull reports? Um, most places, mo most software will, you know, if you kind of have to go under the radar a bit. And that's kind of how we typically do it with those those companies. I can think of a few, I won't name names, but I know there's a few out there that that struggle with that and they make it really, really difficult. They can make it super easy for you to pull out their information. And, and we've had some right. clients in the, the roofing space, in the legal space. And uh, in the legal space, it, it was like talking to a wall. You couldn't, like when you told them, hey, we're, we're actually migrating, um, they just stopped communicating with you because they don't, they don't want to lose your business and they're going to make it as difficult for you as possible. Sure. And in order to get some information out, and there's two different types of information you need to get. You need to get the information that's in the record itself. So like the text fields, the name, the address, that stuff. What's almost trickier are the, are the files. So the images that you're taking on a job site, how do you get those out? Those are stored in a different area. Those are very difficult to get out because they are in, think of it like a Dropbox location, right? They're hosted on a server somewhere in some location and it's actually more difficult to get that out than some of the other records. So you have to be very careful when you're pulling that information out. And so we kind of go underneath the, the radar and we ask, oh, we need this information. We need, need that information. We're not telling them anymore that our clients are moving and migrating to another tool because that's when the, the prickly hairs pop up and they just stop helping. So if you can kind of go under the radar and, you know, uh, ask nicely, like, hey, we need these images out. And then you just use that information to start pulling more and more out. Um, they're not going to help you get the information out. It's it's on you. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing when you're switching with a marketing agency from one to another. You know, you kind of have the conversations like try to get access to your Google Analytics. Try to get access to Google Search Console. Uh, you know, because if you send them a breakup text, they're not going to be as obliged to accommodate you. You know, they're going to be... Yeah. They're going to be spiteful. They might be petty. Maybe they won't be. Well, who knows? But if we're playing the odds here, when you give people bad news, they're more likely to have negative emotions towards you. And if they have ne if they feel negative emotions towards you, they're more likely to you know, act that way. So let's play the That's odds. Nice. And let's just, uh, you know, maybe not tell them. We'll be sneaky. <laughs> so, well, then that, that makes me think, right? So, because I know as owning a marketing agency, you know, there's a, there's a, Two dozen questions you should ask a marketing company, um, roundabout-ish, uh, as far as like, hey, do I own my website? Will I own my domain? Will I own my ad account? Am I going to have access to reporting? What are expectations? Like, there's certain things that you should ask to have a clear understanding of who you're getting in bed with, so to speak. What are the questions that a contractor considering a CRM should ask the representative of that CRM to make sure that they're not landing in a precarious situation and finding out about that four years down the road? Yeah, I think... Data control is absolutely one of them. Um, data security is another one. How secure is your your system? Um, now, a lot of people take that for granted, and uh, the roofing industry uh, definitely needs to take some notes from some other industries and make sure that you know, like your information is secure. Um, there's been a lot of issues with data breaches recently, and working with our legal clients in the data breach space, it's really eye opening how easy it is for some people to just take advantage of that and how easy how easy it is for other people to uh, push lawsuits on you because of that too. So it's something that you want to be careful of um, as well, just as a, as a side note to better understand and ask those good questions. And then I'd say, you know, what are your support? What is your support like? How quickly am I going to get support if I send an email versus let's say a chat versus this other um, method? Is there, do, is there a need for further support? Do they help with setting up the system? Do they help with training and um, getting you trained up as well? And I know most, most places do, which is great, um, but understanding what that actually means, just because they are actually gonna train you on how to use the tool <laughs> doesn't mean they're gonna train you well or they're gonna tra train you in a way that you learn. So I think understanding that a little bit more effectively as to what goes into their training process, uh, how what goes into their support process, just getting more information and asking those deeper questions. People don't do enough of that. People just ask that surface level question and they think that's enough.
But in order to get to that four years down the road, like you said, you really need to dive into those a little bit deeper. Yeah, so I'll play devil's advocate here. So, Casey, you represent a, a CRM, and I'm just a contractor trying to get a CRM. And I, I ask a good question. How secure is your data? What's your answer if, you, if you're a sales rep for a CRM company? Yeah, my, my answer is uh, the tool we use uh, that we really push for and, and try to build out for people is that you know it's as secure as it can possibly be. It's a SaaS application. It has its own web portal. It has its own functionalities. It's as secure as you could possibly be right now in the current state. And if you want more information, I'd be happy to share with you their security you know protocols and things like that. But typically, I won't dive into that unless they really ultimately ask. But I'm open and honest and say like, hey, this is stuff that you're probably not going to understand, but I can provide that for you and actually can get a rep from the security team to talk with you about it in case you're worried about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, because like if I'm, if I'm not up to speed on, on you know, internet security and, and these protocols, it's going to be very hard. Which for most people are. Right. Real. If we don't have that, right, it's going to be very hard to sort through without that level of sophistication and understanding like. Most, I'm assuming most sales reps would be like, it's, it's very secure. Yeah. Right? And it's like, okay, like, is there a simple thing that at that point that the contractor could say to be like, okay, se like send me the protocol or, or what yeah. level of encryption is it or whatever the case may be. Or like you said, talk to the security team. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, ask, ask to talk to someone from the security team or someone who actually knows that and can convince you that, you know what, like that's not going to be an issue. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The, the more you ask, the better off you're going to be. And they're going to, they're, the company, uh, the, the software company might go either way on this, uh, depending on, you know, hey, this is more work. I, I don't want to deal with this person anymore. This person's needy. That, that could happen. But that's also a red flag. If they're not willing to share with you and, you know, follow up on this, then that also is like an extra, you know, when you're going through your hiring process and you're putting hoops for people to jump through. It's right. an extra hoop for that salesperson to say, hey, you convince me. How are you going to convince me? You, you want me to use your product? You convince me that it's worth it. The, the salespeople, the software that's going to go the extra mile to showcase this for you, whether it's security, support, all these other things that you're asking about, are, you're going to have a better relationship with. If they don't go the extra mile and they're just looking for a quick sale, that's a red flag for me. Mm. Are there CRMs that you know work for the guy that's doing a half a million, work for the guy that's doing five million, work for the guy that is doing thirty million? There absolutely or, are. Or there yeah. are. Yeah, I mean, you're actually going to find two sides of the coin here. You're going to find fully customizable solutions, which absolutely do work, but those fully customizable solutions are going to require more input on your end. It's going to require more effort for you to understand if you're only a five hundred thousand dollar business. If you're a five million dollar business, you likely have some funds available to hire someone to do it for you, so you don't have to be as in the weeds as you maybe would otherwise. Then you have the out of the box solutions, and you know the Aculinx, Roofer, Job Nimbus. Those are the out of box solutions. Um, well, Roofer coming up here shortly uh, with their CRM. So all of these tools are going to have a process for you already in place, and that's why they're great because you don't have to think about it. And so when you're actually creating this and, and you have to be careful, you know, in the future, like, will this meet my needs in the future? And that's the question you need to ask. In three years from now, when we're doing, if you're a 500K company and you want to be a $5 million company, how many clients do you need? How many customers need to be going through the door? How many crews do you need? Are you going to have inventory? Are you not going to have inventory? At a high level, have an understanding of whether that tool will be able to serve you at that point in the business life cycle. Whereas some of these other more customizable ones, they will easily fit that role from now until then, but it's just the amount of time and energy and effort you put into it up front or the money that you're able to put up front to ensure that it's set up the right way at the beginning. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Very good. <laughs> I got a question. So if I'm doing seven and a half million and I got, you know, let's say I've got a fully customized solution and I want to bring someone like yourself on, right? And I'm like, I'm just going to bring on a consultant because this is what they do, this is what they're good at, I'm really bad at this. Let's hire someone. What are the questions I should ask you? That's a great question. How are you going to help me go from X to Y? 
That's going to be the number one. What, what, do you, what can you do or what is your service going to be able to do to get me there? And then my rebuttal to that would be, where do you want to go? <laughs> How do you want to get there? What do you need in order to get there? So it's, it's a lot of information sharing uh, at the end of the day. It's, it's being open to talk with a potential consultant about what your goals are, and what your ambitions are, to really help them get to know you and your business to understand. So with that, I would also ask, like, what is the structure of your team? How many people do you have? Are you going to be able to take on the complexity? If, if I feel it's really complex, if my roofing business is, you know, we're going to need bookkeeping, we're going to need uh, or accounting systems, we're going to need invoicing, inventory, all this stuff. Do you have a team who can handle that? Who's going to be able to handle it on your team? Do you have the ability to scale and grow? Um, that is another thing as well, just to be... Um, asking these types of questions understand who's going to be doing the work understand who's going to be managing the project likely the person you're talking to if someone's coming to me i'm i'm not going to be on your project i'm helping get you to a point that i can pass you on to other members of my team because they do that better than i do i'm here to help and provide initial guidance for people but my team is really good at what they do on the back end and so i'm going to push them push you onto them because they're going to get into the weeds with you i can't do that and I recognize that. So knowing the company that you're going to work with, knowing their limitations as individuals, what they know and what they don't know, is also going to be really helpful so that you know who to go to. And then lastly, I'd say, what's your support like? What if I have a question? What's your response time going to be? That's always a big one too, right? Like, you know, if my system is going down right now, how am I going to be able to get it up and running? Like, it's, it's a high priority. Like, nothing's working. If I right. can't get leads in the door... Like that's that's business one oh one. If you don't have that, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, or contracts, right? Like, hey, my contracts aren't signing, like what the fuck? I'm gonna yeah. Yeah. I can see that being very frustrating. Hmm. Yeah. So and those are really good points, and I think those will be helpful for, for anyone watching this. Um so I'm assuming, and this is an assumption, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and if just say shut up, Mike, when I'm wrong. But my assumption would be, like, if we're building out a customized solution, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to make other things fire, things like Zapier connections, things like that, to create these automations. So as a consultant, you know, I pay you X amount of dollars to build out this customized solution. Let's call it Zoho. Let's say we're using Zoho. And I'm going to pay you, and you're going to fix up my Zoho real nice, and then I stop paying you. Do I have to be concerned that, like, my Zaps and my automations are going to be disconnected? So I, I, I can't answer for every consultant that's out there. Some people are going to have more control. I would say the biggest way to address that concern is you own everything. As a business, make sure you own everything. Uh, so if if you are using the consultant Zapier, um, that should that, that's a red flag because you are always going to be slightly dependent on them to fix that when it goes wrong. Set up your own Zapier. Give them access to it. You want to make sure that you have full control of everything that you do and that you can remove their access. Let's let's be honest, like relationships deteriorate and you know at some point you may need to remove someone from these systems. Um, we understand that fact. And so we make sure that our clients are set up with everything they need on their side. Their credit cards are paying for it. They're the ones that are managing it. They have the capability to manage it. Um, and something we do quite quite heavily, and I'm not sure if you use this tool in, in your business or not, but we use Loom quite heavily to send uh, video screen recordings between our internal team and to our clients to train them. So our goal is by the end of any engagement that you know what to do and you're not depending on us for like the day-to-day -day maintenance of your system. It doesn't make sense for us. It's not worth our time, I'll be honest. Uh, it's not worth your time as well. So if you're not trained up on the system and ready to go, and that's where you need to take ownership too. You need someone on your team to champion this so that that doesn't happen and you're yeah. left flat-footed and dependent on someone else. So aim to never be dependent on anyone else if you can help it. Yeah, and that's a good point. And I think where I take issue with like these types of situations is where there's a lack of transparency. So there could be a solution where, you know what, maybe this consulting company charges significantly less because they're playing more lifetime value of the customer. So they charge less and they, they have control. Um, and that's just their business model. And if you agree to that and you understand that, like, then that's okay, yeah. right? What, what, it's the same thing, like there's companies that, you know, they'll charge you 200 bucks a month for a website. And it's gonna be, you know, kind of a cookie cutter website, but it's better than nothing. 
but you're usually gonna lease that website. The problem is that most yeah. sales reps won't tell you that you lease it. So three years into your engagement, you're like, you know what, we're gonna move on. And it's like, well, we own your domain and your website, so what the fuck are you gonna do? And it's like, well, I gotta start yeah. over, or I gotta stay with you. So it puts you in a precarious situation because of the lack of transparency. So um, I agree, if you, can, if, if you can own your assets, you absolutely should. Um, but I don't think it's always bad. I think that where I think what really bothers me is when there's not transparency and people aren't forthright about what the expectation is until it's too late. Yeah. Right. I, I would absolutely agree with that. And I'd say that's actually something that uh, this is why I err more on the other side, because many of our clients have already been taken advantage of and they come right. to us frustrated and they come to us pissed off because they've had a deal with, you know, shitty consultants who've taken advantage of them because they don't know any better at the end of the day. They don't know what they don't know, which is fair. And so they don't know to ask those questions. And so they get taken advantage of, and it's just not good for anyone. And so you're left in this shitty situation, and then we're left to pick up, you know, the pieces, and they're already frustrated, you know, and they may not be willing to spend much more money because they may have sunk, you know, $50,000 into this project already, and they're pissed off, and they're frustrated, and then they're just more frustrated that they have to spend more money to redo the thing that they already had. And it's just, it's not great for anyone to be in that situation. I'm sure you've, yeah. you've come across that before, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, everyone, we're like the second or third person that people come to because we're not cheap. Um, yeah. But we're good. And hey, it's not me saying it's what our customers say. So, you know, if you got beef, talk to them. I, I would quit, agree with quit, that. <laughs> quit hating. Um, but, but honestly, like, especially when, when you're investing in things of that magnitude, like, go talk to some current customers they have. Ask to talk to three people that they've done, the most three recent builds that they've done. One that they just launched, yeah. one they launched six months ago, a year ago. Because, you know, the other side of it is some people get really fucking hyped. You could be halfway through a build and the experience could be really good. So if you call me and we're working together, I might be like, yeah, Casey's fantastic. It's fucking great. He's, he knows everything. And, and this isn't a, a, an attack at you, but like you could launch it and that thing could go to shit. And then totally. it's like, well, I just endorsed you to seven different people because the experience was great, but the efficacy of the actual product wasn't there. You could say the same thing yep. about Sun. If you're excited about us building your website, we show you the homepage, it's fantastic. Okay, great. We go to show you the rest of it, you're like, this sucks. But you've already been screaming about how great we are. And that's why I say, you know, make sure that you talk to people at different stages of the relationship, because then yep. you, that can really speak to what to expect from that company, much more so than a totally. sales rep who's motivated financially to sell. His family gets fed from him selling you. So there's a bias there. There's an inherent bias that he's going to try to get you to purchase. Um, so, you know, I've seen it in the past. I'm not, I'm not blasting salespeople, but I've seen it in the past where, you know, maybe they, they withhold a little bit of information or maybe they, they tweak yeah. the way that they deliver the message and the framing of it to where, you know, most people wouldn't pick up on it if you're not intimately familiar with the subject matter. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, and within kind of our industry, within, especially in the technology space, it's very easy to use technology, technological mumbo jumbo that sounds really fancy. Oh, yeah. And people have no, no clue what it means. It's easy. Mm -hmm. that, that's what salespeople's main tactic is. They're just, oh, I'm just going to start rambling off, you know, this security protocol that you've no idea, SHA-256. Two, two, you're not going to know what that means, but they're going right. to say, oh, yeah, because of that, it's secure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, and there was a recent double-blind independent study that suggested that 97% of the people that are saying proprietary are completely full of shit. I'm kidding. There, there wasn't a study, but in my experience... <laughs> In my experience, that's somebody waving a huge fucking red flag, all right? A, a double-blind study. That's pretty impressive on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, what, is, what, is, uh, what, is one, what is one thing that somebody can do or have done relatively easily within the CRM that they're using, any CRM, um, that would make a, a meaningful difference? Honestly, map it out. Walk through your steps map out get, get there's plenty of different mapping process workflow tools i'm a very visual person so that's what we use with our clients maybe you're not visual but i still suggest that it's the best learning tool for your team to understand how everything works uh, map it out and see where the inefficiencies lie once you like what what's it's amazing when we go through this process when we talk with our clients and say, tell me tell me what you do right now and they're like oh we do this and i was like oh I, I think we do this but sometimes we do that and like, this is kind of like a circle that we put on the map saying, hey, this is an area that you need to focus on. And We've get, got no know, fucking clue, it turns out. Around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. even just by sitting down, talking with your team, production level team, sales members, like what is your process? Like a lot of people just don't have a clue what they do. So if you just sit down, map it out, 
you're going to get more granularity. And you're going to see, okay, this is a bottleneck. How do we fix that? Does it need to go to this person? Can we set up automations here? It is actually really simple, but a lot of people just don't take the time to sit down and even map it out. That's, that's an incredible point. And, and even if you think about it, like the assumption that, hey, I think, you know, we're super busy, right? And we can, like the process can change over time and we can assume like this is the process and I'm sales and the marketing team can assume this. So there's a disconnect while you think you both know the process, you really yeah. don't. And that would be an opportunity to, to very easily point that out and address it and make sure that everybody's on the same page. That's fucking great. Yeah. And, yeah. and then internally, you can use that as a training tool for new members when they get onboarded. And that's something that is not done enough. Like, hey, these, mm. this is what we build the SOPs off of. This is how you can understand what we do, whether you know, you're marketing, whether you're sales, whether you're production, you know, whether you're a site supervisor, whether you're on the roof crew. If you're giving people more insight to how the business works, it allows them to connect with the business more effectively so that they can understand the mission, the vision, and values that you are creating within the business and the difference that you're making. Mm. Preach. <laughs> That's <was> good. <laughs> Well, dude, I'm gonna I have to take so, a few of these snippets as well. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna listen. We're gonna we're gonna get you out there. This is this is awesome. <laughs> and, then, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cliffhang because there's gonna be a part two. Because in light of all the technical issues that we had leading up to this, my battery's at six percent, and I don't want to get Ooh. cut off. I, I got a real problem <laughs> with people dictating when things end, like you know Riverside.fm or my camera or Mac, my computer. So I'm gonna end it initially here um, before it dies. And uh, dude, I want to say thank you for all this information. It was absolutely incredible. There's no doubt in my mind. I get asked these questions all the time. So we're going to chop it up. People are going to watch the whole episode. And uh, if people want to reach out to you directly and inquire, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, reach out directly is my email. So Casey, K-S-E-Y, at Clientric.co. So we're Clientric CRM Consulting, Casey at Clientric.co. And that's just my email. You can also come to us on our website at www.clientric.co and uh, reach out and fill out our contact us form and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Bang, bang. Again, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you to all you at home, in your truck, everywhere else listening. And thank you to Rupert, because um, you, know, you guys help make this happen. We really do appreciate it. And we gone. <laughs>